Hey there! I thought that what we would do today is have another talk about a theoretical topic, but one I found interesting too. It was another question by Carol, and she asked, what do you think drives us to collect? Now, I have done a video. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing just because I find it comical. It, it seems to have sparked quite a bit of controversy, uh, as far as that's possible in as stupid a topic as fountain pens, but... I try to make a distinction that psychologists like to make in the field of, of collecting, because collecting is a whole field of, of psychological science. We, that's research, not, not by me, but it, it is something that, that, that psychologists research. And a distinction is made, and this is something that, again, I think this was the controversial part, a distinction is made between a collection and an accumulation. So, theoretically speaking, a collection has a focus. For example, I collect Lamy Safaris or I collect Park of 51s. An accumulation has no such focus. So I have a classic Pens LB5 and I have a Pilot Metropolitan and I have a Parker Sonnet and this uh, three pens that I like to use. There's no connection between these things except for the fact that they're all fountain pens. And then strictly speaking, officially, that is an accumulation. But that seemed to... Um, well, offend some people because they felt that their accumulations were also collections. Here's the thing, it really doesn't matter. It's just it's just a matter of semantics. It's a way to organize your thoughts on a certain topic, right? So if you, if you want to refer to your, uh, let's say, 50 random pens as a collection, I don't care. I really don't care. You're perfectly fine. You can do that because th there's a difference between everyday parlance and then maybe what, what a scientist in that field would use as labels and that's fine it doesn't matter okay all I was trying to do was make people think a bit and that seems to have worked because some people got very offended so I thought that was interesting now why do we collect well that's a complicated question you could uh, take that back quite far in an almost evolutionary sense and say, well, at some point we were hunter-gatherers. Notice the gatherer part. So collecting was useful to us because it aided our survival. You can, uh, certain times a year, it may be a little difficult to hunt, but you can still maybe, you know, have some berries left, so to speak, and use those to survive. So from that perspective, I think that the, the gatherer aspect is still very much within us and we like to collect things we like to have a number of things even if that doesn't make sense i've said this a number of times and i stick to that a sensible person has one pen and that's the pen they use why would you need 50 pens or 30, 30 or a thousand or whatever it, it, it doesn't objectively i think make sense but if you're watching this video there's a good probability you have more than one fountain pen and that's okay. I wasn't judging. I was just saying, objectively, it doesn't really make sense. One of the worst things you can do is add up the value of all your pens, how much you, you spend for them, and you'll be... Well, it'll be interesting. Um, so, if it is not absolute pragmatics, which it may be, because you may have a fine nib and a broad nib and an oblique nib, and a, yeah, sure, and you may have a piston filler and a cartridge filler, and a, sure, yeah, and you may have acrylic and celluloid, and a, yeah, yeah, sure, all that's cool, it's all cool, right, that, that could be a very pragmatic consideration, I want different nibs for different types of writing, different filling systems for different... Um, locations or uh, situations where I want to use them, I may want to sample different materials of pen. Yeah, I understand all that. But still, where does the drive to collect come from? I think people have a tendency to want to um, complete something. At some point I went through this phase where I really liked the Visconti Opera Master. And we ended up with a bunch of them. I, I forget how many exactly, but five, six, seven, I really don't remember, but something like that. And it got a bit absurd, and at some point Aziza said, do we actually really need this? And I thought, yeah, no, actually not, not really. And we ended up selling a whole bunch of them. I only have one left now, and that's the one that I love best, right? That's the one I kept. So, for me, I know that I can be a bit obsessive in these things. And I want this, and I want that finished too, and I also want that, and, I, and they had a limited edition. I want, So I'm very careful not to get to that point. 
which is why I have no trouble describing myself as an accumulator, because I don't want to collect. I love Arco Celluloid, but I don't need every Arco Celluloid pen ever made. In fact, I don't want to. I have three, yes, and that is more than enough. And all of those are special to me. There are three different filling systems. There are three very different models, which each show off the Arco in a different manner. And that to me was a lot of fun. But now I don't need any more Arco, because I have what I want. So I think that the when it comes to the the collecting for me this is all very pragmatic as I just said while I have an old win which has that specific shape and that shows off the arco in this way and I have a a paragon which is faceted that shows off the arco in another way etc so that, that, that matters to me but people like that sense of completion they like to have oh, I want to have this one and this one and this one say Lamy Safaris I want every color Lamy Safari ever made well then it really becomes a collection and then you are striving for completion you want to have every exemplar of whatever model of pen you have selected that you want to collect if you do not collect in that way but you just accumulate you just buy those pens that you like then again of course you are free to refer to that as a collection but there is no system no system to your pen crowd again in my mind accumulation there is no focus if you look at my pens there is no focus there may be some mini foci right i could you could look and say oh he has three arco pens that's a mini collection sure but i think it's still an accumulation in my mind so the sense of completion, wanting to have every exemplar of a certain, say, Lamy Safari, a certain model, of, um, I think that's a bit of human nature. I think we like to do things that way. I think we like to have that completion. Plus, if you look at this from a very neuroscientific viewpoint, finding something that you were looking for is rewarding. Right? You go to a pen show, you were looking for this one Lamy Safari that you missed in your collection, and you find it. It'll give you a sense of euphoria. And all kinds of chemicals in your brain are, are involved in that. Think of, say, dopamine. You release dopamine, you feel good, right? So, there may even be a bit of a, a neurological component to, to collecting in that regard. But a question that I always have, there are actually two questions that I always have. One is, how will it end? And the other is, what's the point? And when it comes to the pens I own, I continuously ask myself that question. There was a time I had way more pens, like 10 times as many pens as I do now. But then the question became, but where does it end? Because if you keep buying every shiny new thing that comes out, it will give you that quick rush of, oh, that's cool, nice, I have it. And then you put it aside. Or you use it until you get the next pen. And there is no end. And that to me became important at some point that I really thought, I want this to be able to end. And I... I, so far, 2020, this is July 2020, I've bought one pen. Um, in 2019, yeah, I, I, I have to, now I'm kind of blurry as to what I bought when, but I think in 2019, I may have bought one or two pens. Now, I, granted, these were not cheap pens, um, but, but still, I am not at a stage where, for me, it is rewarding to say, Oh, a new sailor. Got it. Oh, a new safari. Got it. That, that doesn't work for me anymore. But that doesn't work because I don't want it to work. This is not going to turn into some rant about consumerism. I, I, don't, I don't want to get into that because I find it boring. But the thing is, if you ask yourself those questions, where will it end? 
I think that can be a very enlightening sensation because don't forget that collecting can also go wrong. People can also become obsessed with finding the one thing, finish the collection, or complete the collection, or they got to have this, and they spend huge amounts of money on things that are really not, not worth it, or that put them in debt, and that becomes an issue. So there's that question. How will this end? When will I be done? Well, now there's no pens that I'm looking for. Maybe one day there will be. Sorry, there will be. But I, as of yet, not, not really, and I'm happy with what I have. And that's the second question. What's the point? To me, the point is not to own every pen ever made. To me, the point is definitely not to own every new pen coming out. Because I don't care that much. I don't care that much. But what I do care about is pens that I love. So if you look at my pens, I can tell you for each pen that's in that collection, which is about, I have to count them again, but I think something like, like 30. That's more than enough. To me, that's more than enough. I don't, I don't really want more. That's, that's good. And that matters to me. So what's the point? To me, the point is not to own a thousand pens, because that would make me very nervous. Also, think of what I just said. You buy a new pen, you get that rush of, ooh, new pen, adrenaline, dopamine, maybe serotonin. It's like all kinds of things go on in your brain, like, ooh, no adrenaline then. But, then you put it on the stack of the 499 other pens you own. And then you use that pen once, uh, take the ink out, and you have 400 other pens lying around, 499, as you said. You have them all lying around, and what are you going to do? Which one are you going to end up next? So I think that these bursts of, say, dopamine, to simplify a little bit, these, these cognitive, neurocognitive things that make you feel good, that's fun, but that won't last. It's not sustainable. So I would now rather buy one pen a year or two years but that's a pen that I absolutely love rather than, well, here's the next sailor. Ah, the newest sailor. Ah, the newest sailor. Ah, the newest sailor. And you just keep going. I'm not judging anyone. If that's what, what you want to do, that's, that's fine, right? That, I, I'm absolutely not judging. But again, how does it end? Because then it will never end. And maybe you don't want it to end, and that's fine, right? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just, I'm just thinking about how this works. And what's the point? And for me, having a thousand pence, there's no point to that. I have what I have. I do this, sorry, because they're in there. They're in there. Um, and I can all use them. Within the course of one year, I can easily use all of my pens at least once. And that I really like. And that's how I want things to be. So... There you have it. This was another uh, well, rambling monologue, really. Um, I hope this was interesting and useful, something to think about. I'm very interested to hear your opinion about the Fountain Pens collecting, why do we collect, <laughs> collecting versus accumulating, which I still think is a good distinction, but anyway. Who am I? Um, what do you think of that? And uh, that's it. If you have any other topics you would like me to talk about, I'd be happy to oblige. Just leave me a comment, and I'll see what I can do. Hope this was useful. I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye.